uh, finally I'm back from Florida and well we got back last night and I'm, I just had to sleep before I did this and yeah I'm just glad to be back in Texas I'll say that like nothing against Florida because that is still an interesting state like for God's sake whenever I hear a story of Florida man from there it's always funny it never disappoints but the drive back was grueling like I heard people say a commute from, like in New York, if you live in a suburb, like let's say um, a cul-de-sac, I hear the commute from there to New York City is brutal. That's what Gavin um, Ennis, I think, once claimed. Well, this was kind of worse. Because um, you have to drive from Florida all the way to a small town near, I think, either Houston or Dallas. I forget where we are on the map, but... Yeah, it was not, I did not enjoy that part. I did enjoy uh, the small interactions I got for, on Twitter while I, was, while I was riding there. Well, I wasn't I wasn't driving, I was in the back seat when my stepdad drived. Listening to him butcher all kinds of English words. And some music based on Highlander, which I now want to watch Highlander, the movie. Ordered it last night when I got back, so now, now I can't wait to watch that. I also want to watch the TV show now, because... Like they had two good songs from Queen, and they were both pretty good to listen to. Especially the Kurgan theme, I really loved that one. But Princes of the Universe is good too. Anyway, um, I'm back. I'll be uploading some other... I have to do create some more videos since I'll get uh, back. Like There's some recent stuff, stuff that happened while I was in Florida that I didn't respond to, mostly because I was in a hotel and I couldn't talk that loud. But, um, and there's also some stuff that I had ideas for videos that I can't wait to do. Like, one is for Elric Music. The other is, what was the other one? The other is a, a suggestion before I get back to Sticks Master of Shadows and some others, and one on Legacies and all that stuff. Like, that's all I just wanted to say that. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about some of the stuff because I couldn't talk about it while I was waiting to get back home. So, with that out of the way, um... Oh, there's one thing I will not be covering, which is the stick sand, because as y'all know, if you watched any of my videos beforehand, like the one video I didn't make in Florida was on that, I will say nothing except for this. Again, what the fuck were they thinking? Anyway, moving on. Okay, this one actually kind of stung for me. Of all the stories I heard while I was in St. Augustine, this one felt like a kick to the nads. And unfortunately, yeah, it just didn't work out the way I was hoping, but... Anyway, while I was there, also while I was there, I wrote notes of what I wanted to say on these issues, some of these topics. And the first one is this. Now, for the record, I was actually sad about this because I thought it had some promise based on the trailer, but unfortunately it appears that it's not performing the way people had hoped. Now, I've only seen a little of the G.I. Joe live action movies and one, I think, some kind of computer animated movie, the one where they have to rescue a guy who's been kidnapped and he's been mutated into some guy, and they have an army of people who have mute, been mutated with animals. Um, so my knowledge of the series is less than uh, adequate. But I did like Snake Eyes' his character. Him and that student who worked with Jinx sometimes, who had the sword that he could not always pull out. Like, he had to get really serious when he did that. Snake Eyes was basically that silent, mysterious character, and I liked those. Plus his rivalry, rivalry with Storm Shadow was kind of mysterious. I'm like, what do you do to piss this guy off? I really want to know. And, yeah, the movie had me intrigued. This seemed like an interesting reimagining of the character's origins. I wasn't bothered by them making him Malaysian. The movie actually caused me to learn about Malaysia. I was genuinely interested to see what their interpretation of this character would be and how they would develop both Snake Eyes and his rival Storm Shadow. Because that is interesting. Like, I love rivalries. I love seeing how people become, have this heated rivalry. How they get to where they hate each other. And I like the fact that they start out as friends. Because I only really know a little bit of the comics. I think they're like, like, they had some kind of, they had some kind of relationship. Like, not a romantic one, of course, but they had some of that, some kind of working relationship, I guess, in the comics. Again, not... I'm not very aware of the lore of this stuff, so I only saw, I think it was Variant Comics talking on the, the character's origin once, and I have no idea if they've updated it since then, but I liked, the, I, I liked the idea of this, 
Like, the trailer had me hyped. I'm not going to lie. Even though people were bitching about it, I was like, you know what? Like, some of the fans are not going to be pleased. I can I can kind of get that. Like, that's what happened with Solomon Kane. Some fans do not like the fact of what they did with Solomon Kane. They were like, he's Solomon Kane in name only. The hardcore fans, I never expected to be happy with it. Nothing against them. I'm sure they have some valid arguments. I've just, I've just yet to hear them all yet. If anything, I expected something similar. Oh, well, actually, no, I already said that. But yeah, again, I expected something similar to Solomon Kane, where not everyone would be happy. I still might see it when it comes out on DVD, but I am disappointed with the lapse in logic, such as how they made Snake Eyes an asshole who does something messed up for the sake of revenge and betrays people, and that's fine. But when Storm Shadow, an honorable man, seeks revenge or kills some people that killed his people, somehow he's the bad guy. And that's the thing I tend to like. Here, and those are the things I tend to like. Characters who are assholes or morally questionable, but it doesn't sound so good in this instance. I do like that from what I've heard, the, the actors Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, the actors for them performed well, so at least I have that to look forward to. Downside, according to Jeremy John, it sounds like it was the original it was an original story that was given a G.I. Joe skin just to get a studio to greenlight it. In which case, fuck. Really getting sick of that. I'm really sick of that bait and switch bullshit. Like, this is something I kind of said on BitChute a while back. I think last year, and it seems if this is true, then I guess I should be doing the fuck you, I was right dance. Uh, I think Hollywood is so lazy, they're just going to take make original ideas, or semi-original ideas, that are horrible and lazy, and then just put a skin of something, of an existing IP on it to make people go see it. So yeah, if you're a fan of these old IPs, I would recommend avoiding them like the plague. And... It's just disappointing. I was looking forward to seeing how they developed Storm Shadow and St Snake Eyes. I wanted to see their relationship. I still, again, I might still buy it on DVD just to see what, the, the dynamic between them. Because I'm just like, every interpretation I've seen of their rivalry in the past, it's like they, ha they hate each other. Storm Shadow really hates him, and in this movie he has a justifiable reason for hating him. But outside of that, I never understood why. And, yeah, I just wanted to see that dynamic. I wanted to see them both develop as characters, how they become enemies. Like, that had me interested. I wanted to see what their interpretation was, how they got to the point where Snake Eyes, an honorable man, goes to work for Cobra. While Snake Eyes, a guy from, with a mysterious past and morally questionable morals, ends up working for G.I. Joe. It's like, the fuck? But, yeah, that's my thought on that mess. But, um, yeah, it's just sad. I was really hoping this movie would do well. Like, I didn't go to bat for anyone, so I didn't lose much. I didn't lose much. It's just, like, this just goes to further illustrate that modern Hollywood should not be given these old IP properties, or these old, old properties that have a built-in fan base, because they will just leech it for money. They will leech it dry, and... They leech it so much you you'd think they were um, they would you would think they consider the IP a sugar daddy, but hey, that's just me. I am not Starfire. Let's move on to this shitstorm. And the entire concept and basically of being a self insert makes me glad I never read Starfire outside of her involvement in Red Hood and the Outlaws. Because it seems as much of a dumpster fire as it did from word fucking go when they first announced it. I'm enjoying the sec every second of this mishap, and DC deserves every bit of it. Because, uh, well, no, they deserve it. Like, this, you had to have been high or stoned when someone greenlit this. You'd have to be. But hey, that's just my thought on it. And now we move on to the Blizzard Activision shitstorm or lawsuit. And, well, I'm probably going to have to do some more elaborate, because I didn't leave a lot on the notes for that one, but given how these companies love the virtue signal, or signal their virtue, this didn't surprise me. They always compensate for these kinds of skeletons that they hide in the closet. And to quote the Joker, you get what you fucking deserve, Blizzard and Activision. Like, anyone, t t 
anyone tied to Activision, I feel no sympathy for. Unless it's not even that. It's that, like, I remember when they made, they were, they announced that stupid Diablo phone, you're like, oh, what, don't you guys have phones? Like, it shows a literal detachment from reality, how out of touch they are, and how they've forgotten where they came from. So you got that, and the fact that these companies like to bend over to pander to virtue, to virtue, and act like they're better than everyone, and then this comes down and like, yeah, you get what you deserve. You get no sympathy from me. I award you no points. And I'm glad this happened to you. I find, I do question whether these women are credible or not, because I didn't really, because I don't know them personally. So it's kind of hard to believe that, but I'm, I do look forward to see how the situation unfolds. And I, enjoy, and I will enjoy it if Blizzard and Activision end up squirming as a result. As for the blackwash and a Batgirl... It's not too surprising. After all, Hollywood has made their hate boner and bias towards the redheads and ginger community in the past more than apparent. And it's so obvious it's so obvious that it's more obvious than Michael Jackson's sexuality. And they've done and they've done so for the past five, maybe six years or longer. Don't get me wrong, as someone who actually likes redheads and gingers, this is aggravating. This is only what, the sixtieth time they've done this? But something I've come to expect at this point, Crom, damn it, because, like, what do you expect from them? These are hacks. They're all about diversity. Never mind the most shallow kind of diversity. And, yeah, I call out this hypocrisy every time, but it is still about as surprised as Kevin Smith bending He-Man's character over the barrel and showing him the 50 states creatively. And speaking of avoidable car crashes, Kevin Smith's Masters of the Universe. Oh man, talk about a goat fuck that aspires to rival Gettysburg. For the record, I haven't watched Revelations because I really, I really wanted to respond to the controversy. That and I don't want to support this abomination. Nor am I a hardcore He-Man fan. I saw the reboot in the 2000s when I was a kid. And with both those in mind, even I found what was done to be a porn. Like, I remember liking the reboot. Like, I like, like, it was kind of intense. I liked that. Like, Skeletor alone was intense. I loved it. But, yeah, again, I vaguely remember the reboot. But I do find the IP interesting. Recently, a few months back, I ended up researching it for a college paper. And as I did so, the more I liked what I was seeing. Mostly because it looked like it looked very pulpy. Or at least to me. Or it could belong in one. Think Conan the Barbarian with fantasy and science fiction technology. So, I found it interesting. I, yeah, I actually had to look it up. It turns out He-Man was influenced by Conan the Barbarian. So, yeah, that was kind of interesting. I was like, yeah, this looks like some really good 40s level science fiction mixed with fantasy. It's good. It's really good. So... Yeah, and this to me felt like The Last Jedi from Masters of the Universe and He-Man being the Luke Skywalker. The main problems I found were with Smith, with Smith and, Gell and the actress who was voicing Tila Geller. And before I address both of those, I just want to say this. This is other bullshit. That, that's it. Let's carry on. Let's see, Kevin Smith lied about being a fan of He-Man, slandered Clownfish TV like you owe them an apology, you fucking dirtbag. Killed Orko either to piss off the fans or because some people making the series didn't like Orko. Lied about the show's content, exposed himself not just as a hack and a shill, but also a liar and a hypocrite. Those are the main points of stuff he did. And I think he was bragging about killing He-Man twice. So, uh, Kevin Smith, uh, fuck you, you hypocritical, disingenuous schmuck. I wouldn't be that surprised if you get some comments about hoping your Widowmaker does a comeback to her. Also, fuck Monday Matt, because I imagine he's defending this bullshit. If anything, I hope this bait and bullsh this bait and switch bullshit Kevin Smith pulled becomes what Justice League was to Joss Whedon. Like, that ended Joss Whedon's career, supposedly, although I highly doubt it'll be for long. Like, I hope this has the same effect that that had for Wheaton, is that it fucks with your career, you stupid.
stupid asshole. And the fact he's attacking fans now it just makes me go doubly, fuck you, Kevin Smith. Fuck you and fuck you, sir. You piece of shit. You used to be one of us. You used to be someone I could respect. Like You were a person I looked at and was like, you know, I could have a beer with this guy. I could respect him. Not anymore, you... I liked it better when you were Silent Bob. And I didn't even watch that movie. I just liked it when you shut your fucking mouth, you stupid piece of shit. And, I, and am I angry about this? Oh, you bet your ass I'm angry. I may not be a big He-Man fan, but I am sick of pop culture being ruined by these dilettantes. Who act like they know everything, that they know what's best, that they're doing what's best for the fans. This is like what Garth Ennis did to Lobo, basically. Like, Flat Tracker brought this to my attention once, was... Garth Ennis did a Lobo comic. He ruined the character and then acted like everyone should be kissing the ground he walked on. So, yeah, that's what I think Kevin Smith did. And fuck you. Clownfish TV was right. And I hope they drag, I hope they loom this over your head for a very long time. And, you know, fuck. And he gave bullshit justification for why he slandered Clownfish TV, why he only called them out but never called anyone else out for saying the same stuff, or or him doing similar stuff where he talks about rumors, and it's fine, but when they do it, it's, it's wrong. So, again, it's Kevin Smith from the bottom of my heart. Kindly, find a sharp... No, I can't say that on here. I'll probably... Because this is going on YouTube and bitch, so I'll probably get banned from YouTube. But, yeah, Kevin Smith, fuck you. Fuck you, and... Just die in a fire. That's all I can really say. I'm, and that's not a threat against his life, YouTube. But, yeah, if he dies, I hope it's in a fire. That's how much I hate him right now. Next point is Michelle, Sarah Michelle Geller. Now, let me see. She misrepresented how Tila and Evil Lynn and She-Ra and the Sorceress were used in the 80s. Her exact words were apparently, the women were afterthought characters. And supposedly attacked fans in the 80s. Well... I can see why she was cast as Buffy back in the day. She really encapsulates how big of a sanctimonious bitch the Slayer could be. Then again, maybe she's just trying to comp compete with her hubby for the title of the most loathed, washed-up douche on the internet. In which case, I guess I should be more supportive. After all, the bitch Olympics are still raging. Also, for the record, from what I remember of the 2000s reboot, I thought Teal was an okay female character. The one from the 80s was kind of hot. The 2000s version was cute and semi-hot. Same with Evil Lynn in both the 80s and the 2000s. So, Sarah, if these are... I don't, as you know, I'll go off of the notes on this one. There is po a possible... I can't remember his name. is like Carmen Panish, I think is his name. He's a Middle Eastern guy that Midnight's Edge had on. I will be... I think I have a link to that in the description. Or I, It's like on the list of sources I'm using for this from what I read while I was in Florida. I think he was in an interview with Midnight's Edge and he said she's probably being told to say this. In which case, she's just saying random shit. Um, if that's true, that's kind of even more pathetic in my opinion. But yeah, it's... Um, so yeah, Miss Geller, from the bottom of my heart, kindly go straight to hell. And I really mean that. I do. From the bottom of my heart, you piece of shit. You liar, you fraud, you dilettante. You you schlub. Also, you were sh I think you were shit and buffy as well. Like I could not stand your character. You were a horrible character. I'm glad that show got canceled. Shame Angel got canceled. But oh well, that's the way the cookie the cookie crumbles sometimes. And that's mainly my thoughts on that front. She didn't her offense was not as big as Kevin Smith's, although I would not be surprised if she doubles and triples down on this so hard you could think she was actually no I'm saving that for later. But yeah, I would not be surprised if she doubles down on this bullshit. So some other things I want to touch on about on the show where, um, based on what I've been hearing and what I've been, a little I saw of this show from clips, um, there's already a Masters of the Universe girl show. It was called She-Ra. Why aren't girls allowed to have these kinds of shows with their role models, but the guys can't? Like, this is something that Yellow Flash and the, that Umbrella guy pointed out. And I think they're right on. 
which is whenever a guy has a show with get a guy role model, they always have to ruin it. They can't just let it be a guy who's like, see, this is something to aspire to be like a nice guy, like an actual nice guy, not one of these fem female allies who may secretly be a rapist. But hey, you never know. Like girls are allowed to have those kinds of things. If a guy has it, they have to girl it up and make it a girl centric show. So yeah. To all you people who act like guys don't get any role model things in media, fuck you. Fuck you. You liars. You insufferably disingenuous douche canoes. And I think this was intentional. Like, we live in a society where, and I hate to sound like this, but yeah, we live in a society where men are torn down constantly. Although, the, the last bit of news I will be touching on is seems to be a correction of that, so yeah, there's that at least. Anyway, moving on. I do think it's a nice change from the usual bastardization of redheads. Instead of the black washing they normally do, they decide to just give her an insufferable personality. Then give her a butch look look over. This should be hard, considering she actually had a pretty decent personality from the 80s, from what I remember. What little I've seen of her. And, well, yeah, no, and Kath, and one thing I think I remember hearing was, like, they went out of their way to demonize men, like, all the men in this show are portrayed as either idiots or morons, or just not good people. The king was made to look bad, man at arms was made to look bad, um, when Tila has a conversation with, um, Evil Lynn, she... They just, it's basically, all oh, men are trash. So, yeah, there's that. Kathleen Kennedy and Ryan Johnson, they've got to be looking at this green with envy. Like, I imagine Kennedy is probably seeing this as a part of some wet dream. She's probably jacking it off to this dumpster fire with how pissed people are. Like, she's probably going to be like, like, jacking it, jacking it, jacking it, jacking it, San Diego. She's probably in that mode right now. Like something not in San Diego, although she might, although she does, she's a part of Hollywood and that is in California. I think San Diego, yeah it is. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, they've probably got a, and Ryan Johnson's probably getting a semi just thinking about this. This is probably the first time he's had one. And lastly, Andrew Wilson has got to be looking at this and thinking, oh, so this is what pissing people off looks like from the outside. Like he's like, Oh, man, this is probably a bad idea. Oh, wait, is this what I've been doing? Like, I'm hoping that's what he's doing, because I don't like Andrew Wilson, but I would like to hope that he's just a greedy son of a bitch and he has some self-awareness when he sees this, but that was the works, I guess. Final thoughts. Um, on the positive side, I'm glad actual fans are raging and, and raking Kevin Smith over the coals about this. Then they got a pretty low Rotten Tomatoes score. I mean, that doesn't mean much because Rotten Tomatoes is about as reliable as an STD-riddled hooker, but eh. Uh, Kevin Smith, you lied and Orko died. And to the Jagoff journalists, Kevin Smith fanboys, Geller stands, shills who, and the shills who, are, who find this and start defending it with the usual, oh, you're just an upset fanboy, incel, misogynist, blah, blah, blah response. Kindly give a blowjob to a loaded shotgun. I'll probably get kicked off Twitter for that, being, or not Twitter, uh, YouTube, but I do not care. I'm too annoyed at this point to give a shit. But yeah, fuck y'all. Anyone who defends this farce is an idiot and a chump. Unless you genuinely enjoyed it, then go with God, my friend. Uh, if you actually did enjoy it, I won't hold it against you. But fuck me, this is an, an injustice. Not just, just not just against T Man fans, but as someone who liked Tila in the early two thousands reboot, this kind of stung. Anyway, moving on. In California news, court shoots down transgender pronoun law. I was definitely surprised to hear this news, mostly because California's history is retard bill central. Kind of made me think, oh, this will stay up for a while. I don't have anything against transgender people. I think their community is misrepresented, but other than that, that I don't got beef outside of them trying to shut down businesses that want to stay out of their stupid affairs and don't put gay stuff on the cakes. And it's only Christians that do this to. I don't see them doing this to a Muslim bakery. 
As always, Scott Winter acted like a drama pretender to the throne, defended his usual bullshit with hyperbolic statements like, the court's decision is, a di is disconnected from the re reality facing the transgender people. Deliberately misgendering a transgender person isn't just a matter of opinion, and it's, and it's not simply disrespectful, discourteous, or insulting. Rather, it's straight-up harassment, I call bull. And it erases an individual's fundamental humanity. Oh, grow the fuck up, you stupid. Particularly one as vulnerable as a trans senior in a nursing home, Wiener added. This misguided decision cannot be allowed to stand. Just all around exemplify, and that's the end of the quotes. Just all around exemplifying everything about Californians I despise. Eager to go down the totalitarian communist route without much self-awareness. Um, and yeah, yeah, like, I remember hearing he wanted to jail, like, this is the same douchebag who wanted to make it less of a penalty for knowingly giving someone HIV, you stupid fucking Californian asshole. But yeah, Scott Winter, if you see this, and I hope you do, you could do with the break, my guy, and we consider taking a vacation to Iraq or Iran or Israel. Or somewhere in the Middle East. I'm sure you'll be back with a happier attitude or enjoy it so much you'll never leave. Lastly, I thought I would touch on something that I found personally amusing. And if you're a woman and you find this offensive, just know I do not give a shit. Like, women, I got nothing against you personally. Well, I don't have anything against you for being a woman, at least. As I, I look at women the same way I look at guys with apathy. Unless you're a, a moderately attractive redhead, I do not give a shit. But anyway. Senate voting on women being available for the draft is kind of the title of the notes I wrote. I had for this, which is, um... Yeah, as I said on Twitter, and regret it not for a second, congratulations, ladies. You wanted equality. You're now as equally fucked like we are. And I'm ready to double and triple down on this so hard, you'd think I was purple -acky. If this becomes reality, I don't know if they voted on this yet at the time of recording or if they decided not to do it or whatever. But anyway, if this becomes reality, I'm going to be enjoying the salt of flow because there was already salt from this respond to this article and I was enjoying all, all of it. It was like, well, ladies, you said you could do anything us guys can do aside from not kind of giving birth. Well, now you get to die equally with us on the battlefield. Congratulations. I hope it was worth it. And ladies, not counting my relatives, you get no sympathy from me on this. You were more than happy with us guys having our rights trampled, robbing men of college campuses, robbing men on college campuses of due process, or letting us gain screwed over in divorce cases, or us being forced to pay child support for bastards that aren't even ours, or our boys being molested in school and ignoring the issue or just joking about it. And don't even fucking dare act like for like, if the genders were reversed, it would be treated, like, the same way. I just want to point that out. So, you have done... We have had lots of stuff, shitty stuff happen to us guys. You're a turn of the barrel, I guess. And... Let me see. All the while, letting us be called privileged and acting like us guys don't have crap to put up with. And saying, you can do anything, we can do better. I already said that. Well, time to put your money where your mouth is and nut up or shut up. Again, you get what you fucking deserve. As for the women who didn't want this and weren't pushing this kind of crap, you do get some sympathy from me. Like, I don't think you deserve to suffer because of some what feminist idiots did, but at the same time, you allowed this lunacy to go on. The ones who actually advocated against it, I can respect y'all, but other than that, you get other than that, that's all I can really say. And honestly, I'm surprised I didn't get a semi from reading this news. I really am. But, uh, yeah, it is kind of sad this is happening because at the same time, women, you were protected from this kind of thing for decades. And but at the same time, you were protected by this from this for decades and you never had to fight with us in wars. I grant there were probably some women who did want to fight in the wars with men, but they weren't allowed to. Then again, there was a possibility of you being raped on the battlefield, because, well, I'll let you finish that, 
process in your heads because I'm not finishing it for you. But yeah, be careful what you wish for, ladies. You might just get it. And in this case, you did. Unfortunately. Again, the feminists who hear this, you do deserve to be drafted. You do deserve to die in a war because you've been bitching about us men not doing anything productive in society. Well, now you get to see how it feels to die in some war you didn't even vote, sign up for. If they bring back the draft, of course. That's still hypothetical. Anyway, that's all I really wanted to say. This part I should do over because I thought the first time I did it on this news was a bit too harsh. So, yeah, that's all I really wanted to talk about. Um, again, I'm glad just to be back from Florida so I can do videos again. Um, actually, while I was there, I ended up accidentally working on an RPG book. I might just post it on Twitter for people to read. And the funny thing is, I made a Florida man a perk in that RPG. It's a perk. If you know anything about the Florida man and meme, you will get one that's funny. But anyway... Think like magic, like you know, ever heard of swords and sorcery? Well, in this case, it's guns and sorcery, and or guns and swords and sorcery, basically. That's the RPG. If you're interested, let me know in the comments, and I'll send you what I have so far on it. And uh, yeah, have a nice day. Remember, the game was rigged from the start.